the um, refrain, the chorus, because I'm pretty sure most of you know this one. Um, but like my husband said, humanity and divinity always work together. Mm -hmm. And so there's something for us to do. And I'm going to sing is, you're all on the altar of sacrifice laid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment always. You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill. On the altar your all you must lay. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Oh, we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessings for which we have prayed till our body and soul he doth fully control and our all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Who can tell all the love he will send from above and how happy our hearts will be made of the fellowship sweet we shall share at his feet when our all on the altar is laid is your all on the altar a sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit control you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul thank you I <clears throat> appreciate that song. I know it may not look like it, but I really enjoyed a song before, a song about Christ and the Godhead. And um, I'm not nervous, but I am 
always concerned. And hearing songs before I count really, really relaxes me and helps me to focus. My concern is that I don't ever want to say anything wrong or have the wrong demeanor or the wrong attitude when I present. I don't want to ever drive anybody from Christ. And so I just, I just really appreciate the gospel and song. All right, we left off with the laver, I believe. If I can find my little handy dandy. Advancer, we've been talking about the sanctuary and how the furniture in the sanctuary God has put into his children. And uh, we will continue because remember <clears throat> when God told Moses to make the sanctuary that he was to make it exactly after the pattern he saw in the mounts. So as it is in heaven, as it was with the children of Israel, so is it with us today. So, <clears throat> taking a look at the laver, buried under all the other lobes is the insula. It's, it's especially protected. It, has, it is deep within the folds of the lateral seleucus. Science has not fully discovered all the functions of this part of the brain but it is shaped like a bowl. And you can see it right there. <clears throat> the foreman magnum. The priest and the high priest went in and out of the door, the forum magnum, receiving the information from the Lord. And once again, you see those one, two, three, four, five, pillars that represents the senses. So, the first structure upon entering the form and magnum is the brain stem. You see that right here. The opening in the occipital bone through which the spinal cord passes from the brain. The first structure upon entering the form magnum is the brain stem. This part of the brain is involved in involuntary functions such as respiration, heart rate, etc. that occurs without conscious thought. <clears throat> so there it is right there. The table of showbread had a shelf with a crown and a border of a hand's breadth with another crown. So you see the crown on top and the crown on the bottom. God was very specific in his instructions. Bread is ingested through the mouth where we have two sets of crowns, one on the wide bone and one on the narrow bone. The seven golden candlestick. The candlestick was to give light in the sanctuary. It was never to go out. Read Zechariah chapter 4 and note the similarities of the trees and the pipes. So we are a light set upon a hill. Are we not? Our light is to never go out. If it goes out, it means we've lost the true light. Exactly, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, <clears throat> it's interesting. The eye is the sensitive, sensitive conscience, the inner light of the mind. Upon its correct view of things, the spiritual healthfulness of the whole soul and body and being depends. So how you view life is very important. The eye salve, the word of God, makes the conscience smart under its application. For it convicts of sin. But the smarting is necessary that the healing may follow. <clears throat> and the eye be single to the glory of God. Says Christ. By renouncing your own self-sufficiency. Giving up all things. However dear to you. You may uh, buy the gold. The white raiment. And the eye salve. 
that ye may see. Our High Calling, page 350. The eye contains 7 million cones and 100 million rods. Yeah, that little thing in your eye right there. <clears throat> the thought of how the thought of the eye and how it could be possibly reproduced or be produced by natural selection makes me ill. <laughs> Charles Darwin. No, I can't. But you won't re you won't read that in a textbook. He himself even questioned natural selection. <clears throat> the altar of incense. We're in the holy now. Or the altar of incense was a place of prayer. The incense had four spices plus salt, making five ingredients in all. Five is the number of grace and redemption, and the incense represents the merits of Christ, which went up with the prayers of the saints. And also remember how they made that incense. It had to be beaten. Those four spices plus salt had to be beaten. <clears throat> he was wounded for our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah 53, 5. For God has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thus, your prayers are accepted. Without Christ's sweet Savior, our prayers were not able to be presented before God. Becoming unto God a sweet-smelling Savior in the beloved. Thus, you enter into his rights and become an heir with God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. You will enter into his victories and the reward of eternal life will be given you. So let's talk about the ethmoid bone. The nerves of the sense of smell travel through the ethmoid bone to the olfactory bulbs. This is the only one of the five senses that is not routed through the thalamus. It represents our prayers. Now that's important. Remember how Satan used the five senses to tempt Eve? It said when she smelt it, it was more powerful than the other senses that she had used before she got to the sense of smell. That, that <clears throat> sense is not routed where, like the other four senses are routed. It's just like music. Music does not need your permission to enter into your psyche. That's a, that's a scientific fact. So you have to be careful of what, you, what music you listen to. <clears throat> you also have to be careful of what smell you smell. Those are actually dedicated. Amen. That's that's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. I mean, you. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I, I believe some of them can be. Yes. I sure can. Yeah. So when they put that next thing up into your nose, they're trying to destroy that and put some of the substance on those spots to get into your brain. It's mm -hmm. evil. Yeah, it's very evil. Yeah. <clears throat> very evil. I remember when um, Macaron was going to go negotiate the Ukraine war with Putin and R Russia wanted to swab him for COVID. Mm -hmm. And this is what really opened my eyes up. They said, what would it be for the Russian government to have our president's DNA? And they refused. Mm -hmm. That was a serious wake up call of what they're doing with that swab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One other thought about the restaurants that you go by and in the malls and everything, smells. smell. smell, smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's purposeful. Yes. Smell you know. I, I, Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the one thing that I, after a year of being a vegan, that tempted me was KFC because I used to like it. Oh, okay. And I went by there one day and I had such a strong, overpowering desire because of smelling the mm -hmm. chicken to just go in, to drive in. And then I had a further testimony later on. 
Well, no, go t tell it, because it's, it's powerful. Okay, well, um, <coughs> when, when we moved back down to the Cayman Islands, Rick was getting sorted out with his license and stuff, and I was working with this group of companies, this family group of companies. The lady there asked me to go ahead and babysit for her. Uh, she had some high-end babysitting for some dignitaries and stuff at uh, the Ritz-Carlton, and she asked me, hey, could you fill in for me? She didn't have anyone to go. So I went the first time, and I told Rick about this later, but they offered to buy me some food, and they said, hey, we'll make sure it's convenient. I refused, and I thanked them. I said, thank you, but, you know, I'm fine. But uh, I remembered feeding the baby the chicken that the parents had left, the chicken and fries. Chicken and nuggets, mm-hmm. Chi yeah, chicken tenders, actually. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. And I told Rick, I said, uh, yes, <laughs> that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I didn't reject the thought. No, I didn't participate in eating it, and I wasn't even tempted that time. Mm -hmm. But fast forward four weeks later, and I had another babysitting job. Somebody couldn't make it, and she was like, hey, can you go to the Ritz for me? And I was like, oh, sure. So I, I went, and this baby, the parents offered me food again. I was like, no thanks, and they brought the baby to another baby. <laughs> and I'm feeding the baby the chicken, and I felt like if the baby turned away, I was going to say it. Ooh, wow. And I thought to myself, what? What in the world is going on? I haven't eaten meat in 18 years. What, what is, why yeah. did that happen to me? And I learned from Rick very early in our marriage. He always asked me if I fell into something or, you know, I, he would say, well, dear, why did you do that? And I was like, well, I don't know. And he goes, well, pray about it. So I, I prayed about it right away, and the Lord showed me that, you know, in those few weeks earlier, I didn't reject the thought. Yeah. I didn't surrender to him at that yeah. point. Yeah. And so the temptation became almost overwhelming that I would steal the child's piece of chicken. Uh -huh. and, Amen. and I didn't, of course, thank God for his grace, but it was an important lesson to me to teach mm -hmm. others, as Rick and I travel around the country, and we teach others that... When that thought first comes to you, yes. don't admire it. Don't <laughs> don't bear. What was I think Sister White said? Correct. Parley, parley with evil. Right. Yeah, it's like I reject that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. There's yeah. no way going down to the chicken route. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, I think it was even before the first tell. I think it was when you drove by KFC that day, yes. and, oh, and that is. overwhelming smell and desire. And I didn't. Reject you it. didn't reject it. That's yeah. Right. But you see, you see the five senses there. Yeah. She touched it. Yeah. She smelled it. Yes. You know, so we have to be careful. We, I say the five senses because we have to see how we're being reeled in. Very few sins happen uh, by surprise where you just do it. If you pay attention to your five senses, you can see step by step how Satan's taking you down that path. Yeah. So. Just like what <clears throat> Exactly. Come on, that's going to be a choice for sure. Exactly. Yes, sir. And even the colors that they use, you'll notice that most of the heat joints are red and yellow. And that's because they found out that those two colors attract you to eat. <coughs> Interesting. I didn't know that. Really? Never looked into it. <coughs> okay. Just, just notice the party. That's right. Uh huh. Red and yellow. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's yellow, but <laughs> you can't eat it. He wants to attract you to him, exactly. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay, the Ark of the Covenant. <clears throat> the fifth noid bone in the head represents the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, let, me, let me go back right here. That's it right here. Because this bone 
touches all the bones in the head. Notice the wings right there. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Notice the wings. Notice the box called the cella tersica, which is right here, which is God's throne room. It is a, it is a space where the pituitary gland sits. Over it is a membrane that represents the mercy seat. Okay. The master gland. The pituitary has two working parts, the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe, which represents the two tables of the Ten Commandments. Satan wants to sit on this throne. In the sanctuary, the glory of God was manifested above the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. There are eight nuclei in the hypothalamus. Eight is the special number of the Holy Spirit, the number of regeneration. There is one thalamus on each side. Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So there you have the hypothalamus and the thalamus which is up here, coming down to here. Now, the three persons of the Godhead are represented here in the throne room of the brain. The thalamus interprets and, the, and defines messages and passes instructions to the hypothalamus. You can read the description of the throne room in God, uh, the throne room of God in Revelation 4 and 5. So now we're going to talk about the angels around the throne of God. <clears throat> so I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Revelation 5.11. There were angels embroidered on the first covering of the sanctuary to impress the fact that the angels are ever present to help us. Hebrews 1.14. We saw that the, the wings of the angel and the ethmoid bone. Now take a look at this. In this coronal view of the brain from Gray's Anatomy, the form of angel wings is apparent. This is the throne room area of the brain. Notice once again the box called the cella to Teresica. So there's the angel's wings. And there's the cella Teresica. <clears throat> so it's been scientifically proven that the frontal lobe of the brain is where we get our spirituality, our morality, and our will, our willpower to choose, to accept God or to reject God. So we're talking about the brain now. <clears throat> In this imaging, this is called the God gene. It's interesting, a, ge a, gen a geneticist started out trying to find the homosexual gene. But what he found was the God gene. In the top picture, the frontal lobe, Whenever, and this was a study of 2,000 people. <clears throat> now you go on the internet and look up the God gene or VMAP2. Of course, they're going to have their fat checkers up there denying it and yada, yada, yada. But they never say one word about the 2,000 person study. They don't say that's false. They say the gene is false. <clears throat> but this was a study. And every time a hymn or a scripture was read the VMAP2 would fire. <laughs> a person who was not spiritual or atheist, this part of the brain would fire. And guess what part of the brain that is? Emotions, feelings, the part of the brain that Satan tries to control. This is the part of the brain that God wants to control. And so his throne room is right about here and that's what happens. This is what happens to a non-religious person. Now, this was Bill Gates' study. Bill Gates presented this to the Department of Defense. He created a vaccine called 
fun facts. You can, F U N, that. It stands for fundamental. Fundamental. Yeah, okay. So, what he proposed to the Department of Defense is to take the fun facts and inject it into the, the terrorists. Well, it started, yes, you're right, but he started it with the terrorists. And he said, if we can get this into these jihads, then we can turn them into this. Uh oh, come back here. Turn them into this. In other words, changing their DNA. This is Dr. Joe said earlier this morning. And I smiled when he started talking about it because I knew this was covered. <laughs> and so they went on down the list terrorists, and so, and then he got to fundamental Christians. And that's why they named it Funvax. Yeah, that's, but he's just experimenting with them first. So we have the God gene. But he <clears throat> is a scientific name for a vascular monoamine transporter 2. The VMAT2 gene uh, molecular study of 2,000 people in the, in the religion, behavior, and beliefs in God. You can find a study, I have it. It was done to 2,000 people in Iran. But there's something even more magnificent than that. The lanonin protein. This is a protein in your body that exists, and it looks just like this. So, lanonins are large cell adhesive uh, glycoproteins that are required for the formation and function of basement membranes in all animals and humans. Structural studies by uh, electron microscopy in the early 1980s revealed a cross-shaped molecule which subsequently was shown to consist of three distinct polypeptide chains. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. So, what are lanonins? What do they do? What's their function? Remember at the beginning I showed you how the sanctuary was held up by 48 boards? And then we looked at the structure of the human body, the, 40, the vertebrae and the ribs, etc. The role of lanonins, the basement membranes, are the dense sheet-like form of extracellular matrix that underlie epithelial and epithelial, uh, ep endothelial and surrounded muscles, fat and Schwann cells. Basement membranes separate tissue and protect them from mechanical stress. So your body, besides your muscular skeletal structure, more importantly, is supported by lanolins. Christ has marked, he put his mark on every tissue in your body to support you, to strengthen you, to get you through those difficult times of trouble. He's got your back. We just have to trust him. The cranial nerves, or the 24 elders. There are 12 cranial nerves on each side of your brain that help the brain to govern the body. They represent the 24 elders in Revelation chapters 4 and 5. These people went with Jesus from the earth, Matthew 27, verses 52 and 53, and are helping in the judgment in heaven. They represent the vessels of the temple which were necessary uh, to help to do the services there. If any man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good works. 2 Timothy 2.21. Now, there's all 24 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Both sides. 24 elders. Pure uh, river of water of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The cerebellum, the tree of life. The spinal fluid originates in the ventricles in the throne room area of the brain. 
just as the river of life proceeds out of the throne of God. Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2. The spinal fluid must be pure or there is a major health problem, even death. So, the cerebellum, the fluid, you see it originating, going throughout the system. Now, the union of two great truths. Christ is cleansing the temple in heaven from the sins of the people. And we must work in harmony with him upon the earth, cleansing the soul temple from its moral defilement. We have a job to do. That's why I've showed you, and I'm God, God, God has blessed me with this information to share with folks. To see how important, how necessary it is that we take care of this body. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be written in their foreheads. Now, when Christ bursts through that cloud, are we going to be those that say, hide us, let the rocks fall upon us? Are we going to be those that say, Lord, this is our God who we have waited for. Yes. Amen. Praise God. We made it through it. I hope it was a blessing for you as it was for me. And um, may God continue to bless each and every one of us and take care of these body temples.